I think all the people you know so has joined already. So so let me uh, start you know my lecture today. So yeah, my name is Jason Lee. Okay, and I'm in the nuclear medicine department of Seoul National University. And you know, actually, I'm lecturing the the basic physics for nuclear medicine. And last time, two weeks ago. I told you about the very basic the principle of the photon and particle interaction of you know, materials. So today, you know that the, based on my previous lecture uh, on the, the interaction, uh, let me you know provide you the, the lecture regarding the, the principles of radiation detectors. So yeah, as I told you before, my two lectures are based on the the textbook, the Physics in Nuclear Medicine, first edition. Uh, and this is the table of contents uh, of the, the chapter seven of you know, this uh, textbook. Yeah, actually chapter seven the, or for radiation detectors, you know, the consists of three parts. Uh, and the first one is you know, gas field detectors uh, that include the you know, basic principles of gas field detectors and that also introduce the principle of you know, ionization chambers, proportional counters, and Geiger model counters. <clears throat> and the second you know, section is you know, the semiconductor detectors. And last section uh, covers the scintillation detectors that uh, provide uh, information under the basic principles of scintillation detectors. And what is you know, photomultiplier tubes? And photodiode and inorganic uh, scintillators, and considerations in choosing when you choose uh, uh, the inorganic you know, scintillators for you know, radiation detectors, and organic scintillators is also introduced. Mm. So let me start with the you know, very general the principles of you know, radiation detectors. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, first, you know, the operation of radiation detector uh, basically depends on the, the interaction of ionizing radiation with metal. So, so that is why, you know, that uh, I gave you a lecture on the interaction of you know, ionizing radiation with metal last time, because, you know, that the, the basic operation of radiation detector is uh, totally depends on, you know, this interaction. Okay. Mm, yeah, actually, you know that the so radiation detector is a kind of you know measurement system, the energy measurement system, and this energy measurement is you know uh, uh, happen you know based on the you know the different you know the interaction mechanisms and the interaction mechanisms that you know radiation detector depends on include you know the excitation of electron or the you know, ionization of the you know, molecules. Yeah, actually, you know that the, as I told you last time, <clears throat> the excitation means you know the elevation of electrons to an excited state in atom or molecule or crystal, and ionization is the removal of you know electrons from you know, atoms or the molecules. So by the the excitation or the ionization. Uh, in, in, incoming, you know, radiation, you know, the transfer each energy to the radiation measurement system, and the radiation measurement system, the basically, you know, absorb, you know, this energy coming from the you know ionizing radiation, and mostly these radiation detector systems convert this energy into the electrical signals. So I mean that the, so you can just understand the main function of a radiation detector is the conversion of you know, instant radiation into the electrical signals. I mean that the radiation detectors, they observe the energy of instant radiation and convert this energy into the electrical signals. Yeah, actually, you know that the, the electrical signal measurement 
usually you know provide you the information on the current watt voltage. So you just need to measure the, the amount of you know current, electrical current from this radiation detector systems, or you can just measure the voltage level of the output of you know electrical the signals. Okay. So I think this is very the key slide of my lecture for today. Uh, so what is gas field detectors? Yeah, actually gas field detector is very, you know, the basic the radiation detector that we uh, widely use. Yeah, so actually, so, so you can, <clears throat> uh, you can guess what's the function or so or what's the composition of, you know, this detector from the, you know, name of, you know, these detectors. Yeah, actually, you know, that this radiation detector is filled with you know any gas, and this gas is used to the convert you know absorb the radiation or uh, the energy of instance radiation, and this gas you know produces some electrical signals as I told you. So you can see you know such a principle of you know gas field detectors. Yeah, as I told you, so this radiation detector system is filled with some gas. Yeah, actually, you know, that uh, there is in you know, air or other gas, other gas. And this gas field detector produce some electric signals like this, okay? And then electric signal is corrected by the, the pair of, you know, the anode and cathode, anode and cathode. And actually it generates some electrical current like this, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you closely look at you know this slide, closely look at this slide, you know. So this is in a gas chamber, gas chamber, and the two ends of you know this gas chamber is just some you know metal electrode that is you know connected with you know the voltage source, voltage source. Okay, and and actually, you know, that uh, this air or other gas is a kind of, you know, the insulator, insulator of, you know, electrical charge. So, so in normal condition, I mean that without any instance of radiation or something like that, because of the, this gas, the insulator, insulator, electrical insulator, Although you know that the voltage source is you know applied to the anode and cathode, you know there should be no current. So no current is generated by the this voltage source because you know anode and cathode is you know blocked by you know some insulator. I mean that the air. So I mean that without any instant radiation, without any radiation no current is induced in this circuit. So I mean that the current output is zero, no current. Yeah, but there are some instances with ionizing radiation that comes to the this gas field detector. So what will happen? Yeah, actually, you know that the, this ionizing radiation, you know, the result in the excitation while the ionization of you know the molecules, I mean that the gas. So I mean that the gas is generate some the electrons like uh, due to the excitation or the ionization. So you know, so this you know the electrons generated by the the instance ionized radiation and the positive you know the ion positive ion you know, move to the, the anode and cathode depending on the each electric charge. So in summary, you know, that the instance the ionized radiation generate, you know, induce this ionization, ionization, and the you know, electrons are, you know, attracted by the anode and the positive ions are attracted by the cathode. So these electric charges are moving and they generate some electric current. 
So now the actually you know, this instance, you know, ionized radiation, you know, the result in the, the electric current on this circuit. So now the you know the current is not zero anymore because of this induced you know, the electrical current. So based on this you know the charge information, current information, you know that we can you know measure. So uh, we can you know the detect radiation while we can measure the you know energy of you know instance you know radiation. Okay. Yeah, so this is a basic principle of you know, gas field detector. And there are several different types of you know, gas field detector. Yeah, I think you are familiar with you know, ionization chamber uh, that include you know, the survey matter and those calibrator and pocket dose matter. And you may be also familiar with you know, the proportional counter and Geiger Muller counter, GM counter is also. Uh, uh, one of the you know, gas field you know, detectors. Yeah, actually, you know that the the, the this output current output current uh, depends on the the amount of this output current is you know dependent on the the amplitude of this voltage source and the you know. Uh, the operation of gas field detector is also operating characteristics of this gas field detector is also determined by the, the amount of you know the voltage source. Yeah, actually, you know that the, if the applied voltage is too low, applied voltage is too low. Uh, I mean that uh, this applied voltage is too low is is very weak. You know that uh, the electric potential electric potential between the you know, anode and cathode is not sufficiently high to attract you know, this the electron and the, the positive ionization you know, current. So in this case, I mean that if the voltage source is too weak, you know that the, the Coulomb force between the electron and positive ion is, you know, can be you know, higher than the electric field between the anode and cathode. So in this case, you know that the, this electron and this positive ions is likely to recombine with each other because their Coulomb force is you know, the stronger than the electric field. So, so the, as I told you, applied voltage is to low, these ion, the, positive and negative you know, charges are uh, recombined with each other. So the output current, amplitude of the output current will be quite low. Yeah, but the, the applied voltage, as the applied voltage increase, the number of you know, collected charges so will also increase because you know, the, the recombination is less likely, okay? But the, you know, after some saturation, uh, after some voltage, you know, uh, at the amplitude output or uh, the output, the pulse amplitude of, you know, gas field detector reached to some plateau like this, like this. So that is why, uh, that is because, you know, that uh, uh, all of the, you know, the produced all of the, the produced you know, electron and positive ions are collected by the, this ionization chambers. I mean that the, there is no recombined you know, the charges anymore. So this is why you know, that, uh, it leads to this you know, the flat of you know, amplitude. So after this you know, applied voltage, applied voltage, you know, that is typically 50 to 300, you know, the volt. Uh, the output pulse amplitude uh, is constant regarding this over you know, applied voltage. So we can obtain very stable, you know, the output amplitude that is very robust against to the, 
you know, fluctuation or you know, applied voltage. Okay. Uh, so yeah, actually, so the ionization chambers, ionization chambers are operated at you know voltages in the saturation region. This region, okay. This region. So, so the most important you know the property of these you know ionization chambers is that it is quite robust the, against the drift or you know the applied voltage used in these gas chamber detectors. It is quite good, very good, you know, the characteristics. Okay. So yeah, I think you are familiar with this kind of you know pictures because this is a survey mirror that we use to monitor you know radiation level or radiation protection in several you know areas in uh, your department and we can measure the you know the exposure rate in rentgen per hour or the air karma in the gray per hour so using this survey mirror <clears throat> and those calibrator to assay you know activity levels in uh, Becquerel or Curie is also kind of in you know, a gas field detector. Yeah, actually, you know that the, in the dose calibrator, uh, usually you know the pressurized you know argon gas is used. Okay. Uh, another important you know the gas field detector is you know pocket dose mirror. Pocket dose mirror. Yeah, and actually you know that the you know, in the pocket dose mirror, pocket, actually, so this slide, uh, this picture, the figure shows the, you know, structure of, you know, the pocket dose mirror. So it is basically a kind of, you know, gas field detector because it is in you know, a field with gas. And there is, uh, you know, the charging electrode uh, at the center of, you know, this uh, pocket dose mirror. Pocket dose mirror. Yeah, actually, you know, that in this gas field detector here, so the, the, you know, the upper side was anode and the lower side was in a cathode. But the, in this case, you know, that the, the anode is inserted into the, at the center of the you know, gas and the outer, you know, uh, the outer box is a kind of, you know, anode. But the way it, you know, work in the, the basically, you know, same principle. Yeah, by the way, you know that uh, uh, you should focus on the this the capacitor here. Yeah. Actually, there is a capacitor between the, the cathode, and, cathode and anode of this gas field detector, and it correct uh, it correct in uh, the electrical charge that is in uh, the generated by the ionization, ionizing you know, radiation. So this the capacitor is used to, to collect charge you know from the, the generated by the ionizing radiation and you know after some time we need the amount of you know this capacitor uh, from the you know, pocket dosimeter to measure the, the the accumulated energy you know the generated by the, the observed from the you know instance radiation okay Uh, yeah, actually, you know that the ionizing chamber is a kind of you know work for you know a kind of you know workforce for the you know radiation measure you know monitoring, but the ionizing chambers has some limitations in pra in practice. So that is mainly caused by the uh, each lower efficiency. I mean that the, because we use a very you know light gas. Uh, it is insufficient for X-ray and gamma ray measurement. So this, you know, the preclude they're used for you know, other applications. Okay. Uh, and each le uh, response, you know, change, you know, depending on the instance photon energy, and it also, you know, depends on the pressure and temperature, you know, of the environment. Okay. So this slide shows the such energy dependence, energy dependence of uh, you know 
the identity chamber, the survey matter. Yeah, the x-axis here is you know instance photo energy, and y-axis is the, the, the exposure rate. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, even we do not use in end cap. Uh, even if we do not use end cap, the exposure rate is not constant, and if you know it's changing depending on the you know, photon you know energies. Okay. And if you use in end cap for survey matter, I mean that the the uh, if you use in end cap for the the you know, window of survey matter, you know that the very low energy photons is absorbed by this end cap. So that is why the energy response curve is modified, as you can see here. <clears throat> So if you do not have interest in the low energy photon, you can use in you know, cap, but the, to detect you know, low energy photons, so you should you know, remove in end cap from the you know, survey map. Okay. Yeah, there is another type of you know, gas field detector. So yeah, so uh, some of the you know, gas field detector you know, operate in the proportional counter region. Counter region. Yeah, actually, you know that the, as I told you, you know the the output characteristics of gas field detector, you know, depending on the applied voltage. I mean that if the voltage is too low, the recombination of the charges are dominant, but the, after some voltage, the output pulse amplitude, you know, reach you know, constant because, you know, that all of the, you know, you know, all the, you know, generated charges are collected by the anode and cathode. So this is why, you know, that the, the output is quite constant. And if we use the gas field detector here, uh, so we can say it works in the ionization chamber region here. Ionizing chamber work here, but the, if we increase, you know, applied voltage more and more, after some point, after some voltage, the output amplitude, you know, increase again, like this, depending on the you know, applied voltage. What happened? Why? the amplitude of output, you know, increase again, you know, as the applied voltage increase. So this is because, you know, that the, if the applied voltage is too high, uh, is over some, you know, threshold, this, you know, strong electric field you know, accelerate, you know, the collected charges, generated charges. So, I mean that the, the, the speed of these charges, these charges are sufficiently high to generate another ionization. I mean that the, their speed is too high and their kinetic energy is very, very high. So they generate, you know, another ionization. I mean that the, they work, they work as a, another radiation, ionizing radiation. <clears throat> so they behave like, you know, another ionizing radiation. <clears throat> so that is why, you know, the additional, the <clears throat> additional, you know, electron and positive ion pairs are generated. So that is why, you know, that the, this, you know, secondary ionization, you know, the cause, uh, such a, you know, charge correction increase due to the, you know, the voltage, you know, the increase. So actually, you know, that the, we, you know, say this is a kind of you know gas amplification effect 
gas amplification effect. That is caused by the you know, secondary you know, ionization. Secondary ionization. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, you know that the, the radiation detectors work in you know this proportional uh, this region. This region is called you know the proportional count. So this is why we call this region as uh, you know the, the proportional count region. Okay. So yeah, actually the the important property of this proportional count is the larger electrical signal produced by the individual ionizing radiation event than ionizing chamber because of the secondary ionization, okay? Uh, and the, as I told you, the individual current parts you know, proportional to the, you know, the amount of energy departed by the radiation event. Yeah, so, so we have, you know, the studied about the recombination region here and ionization chamber region and the proportional count region. Uh, yeah, as I told you, you know, that in the proportional count region, the output pulse amplitude the increase as the voltage output, out, uh, applied voltage increase. Yeah, but at the, you know, some, at some point, at some point, it leads it to another situation, another situation. So yeah, actually, you know that this situation uh, happened because you know that uh, there are some you know slow moving heavy positive ions. Actually, you know that the, the positive ion is you know slower than electron because you know the positive ion is quite heavy relative to electron, so it is very slow. So this positive, you know, the ions, positive ions, you know, reduce, you know, effectively, you know, electric charge field around the, you know, the anode. I mean that the in front of the, if the in front of the anode, if there are many the positive ions that is moving slow, actually, you know, that the, it reduced the the amplitude of the electric field between you know, the cathode and anode. Okay, so that is why you know that uh, the effective voltage does not you know, increase anymore, and the uh, amplitude output pulse of the you know, amplitude is constant. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So actually, you know that the you know, we call this region, you know, Geiger Muller region, GM region, and we call radiation detector used in this, you know, GM region, uh, you know, the GM counter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, that the GM counter is also, you know, the widely used because uh, the, this GM counter uh, is simple and log and relatively inexpensive in you know, radiation detectors, but the, the detection efficiency is still low because it is based on the gas. Uh, and energy discrimination is not possible uh, in the chain counter, but it is you know the mostly used in, as a you know survey meter for the you know, radiation you know protection purposes. Okay. Uh, I think you have seen this kind of, you know, detectors with, you know, the pancake type, you know, proof, okay? And uh, the, the cover or, you know, the end cap or, you know, this pancake uh, is removable, removable, you know, when we measure the, you know, radiation, okay? Yeah, so if I summarize, you know, the, the principle of, you know, the gas field det detectors, uh, the operating characteristics of, you know, gas field detector is very dependent on the, the amplitude of, you know, applied voltage, okay? So uh, there are three important, you know, areas uh, in this you know, operating characteristic 
curve, the ionization chamber region, proportional count region, and GN Geiger-Müller region. Okay. So in each of these regions, you know, different you know radiation gas field radiation detectors are made, and their properties are di uh, different depending on these characteristics. Okay. So let me now move to the you know semiconductor detectors. Yeah, the second type, you know, sec the second type, the type of you know radiation detector is semiconductor detectors. So that is based on the semiconductor. Okay. So yeah, I think you know what is you know semiconductor. Yeah, actually, you know the the, the semiconductor, you know, there are two types of semiconductor. Okay, two types of semiconductor. And one of them is you know the p type, and the other one is you know n type semiconductor. Okay. Yeah, actually, you know that the, the p types. Uh, so this is one of the example of you know p type semiconductor. Yeah. So to make you know the typical p type semiconductor. Uh, yeah, all of the semiconductor is based on the you know silicon. Silicon, the typical semiconductors are based on the, you know, the silicon, uh, and silicon has you know you know four outer electrons, four outer electrons. So these four you know the outer electrons, the electrons in the most outer shell, most outer shell. I used to, you know, combine these silicons, you know, with you know, surrounding you know silicons very tightly. Okay, but if we use, uh, if we uh, add some boron here, here, then you know that uh, because it has only three, you know, most outer shell electrons, you know, there is some vacancy of electron here. And if we use add some you know the phosphate here, uh, because it has five electrons, five electrons in the it most outer shell, you know there is some you know the remaining electrons here. Okay, so I mean that the, in the p-type electron there is some vacancy that is called holes, and n-type the semiconductor, so there is you know some excessive you know the electron, you know that is usually called you know electrons like that. Okay. Yeah. So if there is only you know the silicon, silicon, so actually these electrons are very difficult to move, very difficult to move because they are you know participating to tightly combine the silicon atoms like that. Yeah, but uh, if there is a hole for the electrons due to these you know, impurities, actually you know, that uh, the mobility is increased. Okay. I mean that uh, there is a chance that they are moving. These holes and electrons are moving. You know that uh, they can generate some electric current. Electric current. So, but the, it is not sufficient to be a electric conductor. I mean that the, the conduction is in a relatively lower than the electric conductors like in a, some metals or something. So that is why you know, that the, we say they are the semiconductor. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. The semiconductor, you know, radiation detectors, uh, is consist of, you know, the p-type and n-type, you know, semiconductors. I mean that there, it is a combination. Semiconductor detector is a combination of p-type, this type, semiconductor with holes, and n-type conduct semiconductor with electrons. Okay, so. You know, attach in you know, a p-type and n-type you know, semiconductors. Okay. 
Yeah, usually this formation, this form is called in you know, a diode, diode, diode. So I mean that the, this is the general shape of in you know, a diode, okay? So I mean that the semiconductor is basically a kind of diode, okay? Diode means the, some device in which the you know, p-type and the n-type you know, semiconductor is combined with each other like this, okay? Yeah, so now we, we have you know, diode here, we have diode here. And if you know that the no external you know, bias voltage is applied to the, the semi, this you know, diode, nothing happened. Yeah, but the, if we apply some you know, bias voltage in the forward direction like that, like that, I mean that the plus here and minus here, forward bias, actually, you know, that the, <clears throat> this plus, you know, that the, will the expel the course in this direction, and this, you know, the minus here, will you know, expel the electrons in this here. So they are moving and they are combining. These holes and electrons are combining and generating, you know, some electric you know, current like that, okay? Yeah, but uh, if we apply the bias voltage in the reverse direction in this way, in this way, yeah, actually this minus will attract this holes in this direction and this plus will attract electrons in this direction here, okay? So the electrons will be you know, accumulated here and positive ions will be accumulated here, okay? So they cannot meet with each other. They cannot meet, they are separated. I mean that the electrons and positive ions are separated. So they cannot generate any electrical current different from the you know, forward bias in contrast to the you know, forward bias, okay? So no current. The current output is zero if we apply you know, reverse bias voltage here, okay? And, but the, you can see here, you know, this accumulated you know, positive ions and electrons would generate some electric field between them, although nothing happened now. So it looks very, very similar to the gas field detector. If you recall the gas field detector, actually at the center of the you know, gas field detector, there is an you know, insulated gas like this, like this diffusion region, and some electric charges are applied to the the cathode and anode of gas field detector, like this, by applying some bias voltage, but uh, there is no current, electric current. I mean that the, the semiconductor detector in the you know, reverse bias voltage is very, very similar to the gas field detector. Do you agree? So, but uh, if some radiation uh, comes to the radiation, the semiconductor detector operating in the reverse bias voltage, what will happen? Yeah, actually, you know, that, that uh, this radiation can generate, you know, electron and positive ion pair, positive ion pair and they will be collected by the, this, the anode and cathode, the anode and cathode, okay? I mean that uh, some electric current is induced, generated by the, this instant radiation, okay? Like in you know, a gas field detector. So we can say semiconductor detector principle of semiconductor detector is very, very similar to the, the gas field detector, 
okay and we can measure the instance radiation yeah the same principle is used for photodiode i think you have heard about the photodiode photodiode has the same principle same structure and same principle and reverse bias voltage is applied and if some light photon is coming, you know, it generates the electron and positive ion pairs. And we, if we collect them, it generates some electric current. The only the difference between the photodiode and semiconductor detector is that the photodiode is sensitive to the, you know, visual light, visual light. But the semiconductor detector is sensitive to the gamma ray or the you know, X-rays. So only the you know wavelengths, you know, the sensitivity dependence on the wavelengths is different. But the principle is the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are several different type of you know the semiconductor detectors, you know, depending on the, the detector materials. Uh, the silicon, you know, detector, you know, where the, the lithium, small amount of lithium is in you know, the dot is uh, widely used in you know, the semiconductor detector. And the germanium lithium doped in a germanium detector or you know the high purity in a germanium detector is also used, uh, but there, they are you know rarely used for medical purposes. And uh, I think you are most familiar with you know cadmium telluride. Cadmium telluride. So CD is cadmium and T is in you know, a telluride. Okay, cadmium telluride. Or sometimes, you know, that there, you know, we also use, you know, cadmium zinc telluride, CGT, CGT, okay? okay. Yeah, actually, CGT is, you know, a kind of, you know, cadmium telluride in which, you know, some of the, you know, the tellium, you know, is replaced by, uh, replaced by the, you know, zinc atoms, okay? Zinc atoms, but the, their property is quite similar. Is quite similar. Okay. Yeah, cadmium, you know, density of cadmium telluride is quite high, you know, sufficiently for the gamma ray imaging. Gamma ray imaging, it is about you know, six gram per centimeter, the cubic centimeter. And the effective G number is about 50. 50. And the, the you know, average energy expended for electro hole pair created where per elect ionization is about 4.43 electron. Okay. So yeah, if we you compare the, the density and effective G number of cadmium telluride with air, so I think you can uh, appreciate very high density and effective G number of you know, this material. So that is why you know that the, the stopping power of you know for radiation, instance radiation of semiconductor detector is much much higher than you know gas field detector. Okay. Uh, yeah, as I told you, semiconductor is much more much you know more dense than gas, and uh, it also generates, you know, more generate ionization than the gas. Okay. Mm, for example, you know that the gas field detectors generate ion pairs, one ion pair per thirty-four electron volt, but the semiconductor detector generates ion pair per each, you know, three to five electron volt of ion radiation. So with the same amount of ion radiation. Semiconductor generate you know, more ions. 
Yeah, and the and the amount of you know electrical charge, electric you know output you know amplitude, is dependent on the radiation energy, radiation energy. So yeah, as I told you, you know the number of ions is you know depending on the energy of radiation because. For each, you know, three or five electron volt, one ion is generated. So we can use the semiconductor detector as a, you know, energy selective radiation counter. Okay. But the semiconductor has some weakness in terms of noise. I mean that the, the semiconductor detector, you know, generates in you know, a high background noise current at room temperature. So you, that is why you know, we need to make the semiconductor temperature of semiconductor detectors as low as possible. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, impurity of semiconductor is quite important. Okay. Yeah, uh, let me skip you know, this part. Yeah, so yeah, as I told you, you know, the most wide, most widely used semiconductor for medical purpose is cadmium telluride or the cadmium zinc telluride. Uh, this is mainly because you know that the, the noise level of you know the cadmium telluride and CGT is relatively lower than silicon or the germanium detectors. So I mean the noise level is low. So they operate at the room temperature without you know the excessive noise and it also has you know relatively good you know stopping efficiency for you know detecting you know, gamma rays so it is almost equivalent to the sodium iodide so we can use you know cardiomagic telluride you know so as an alternative to the you know sodium iodide detectors uh, it also it has a very good energy resolution, very good energy resolution, but uh, only the limitation is that it is very expensive, it's very expensive. Okay. Uh, the, you know, so actually I told you, you know, so what is the basic principle of you know semiconductor detector and so what is their you know, main properties and what type of you know, semiconductors are available? Okay. So let me now move to the you know, scintillation detectors. I think you are more familiar with you know, scintillation detectors because it is widely used for spec and pen. Okay. Yeah. So the basic principle of scintillation detectors is you know, based on the, the energy release in scintillators. Okay. Yeah. The 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 base, yeah, energy release of scintillators. I mean that the when scintillators interact with you know instance photons, actually it does convert the, the energy of you know instance photon into some type of you know different you know energies, some different type of energies. And most of the energy of instance photons, the part of the, you know, the, the energy of instance, you know, radiation is partially, you know, converted into thermal energy. I mean, it is, it is used to increase the temperature of, you know, scintillators. But some of, you know, the energy of radiation is used to produce, you know, the visible or the UV light. That is proportional to the, the energy deposition. Yeah. In most, in most other materials, in most other regular materials, all of the, you know, energy of instance radiation is converted into the thermal energy. It only used to increase the, the temperature of the materials. Yeah, but the scintillation Detectors, scintillation crystals, scintillation scintillators are very special material, very, very special material that you know generate you know the visible or the UV light photon. 
you know, by observing the, the energy of instant radiation. This is a very interesting material. Okay. Yeah, some of inner centralization material is you know, in organic so substances in solid crystal form. And some of them are in organic substances in you know, dissolved in liquid solution. Okay. Uh, so actually, you know, that the, for in vivo imaging, we mostly use you know, inorganic substances. But the, for the in vitro you know, assay, we also use you know, the organic substances in the solution forms. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you know that the, the in the you know, scintillation detectors, the scintillation material is important component, important component. And another important component is a photosensor, you know, that measure the visible or UV photons, you know, generated by synthesis scintillators. Okay. So, you know, one of mostly why you know the photosensor to measure the visible or UV photon is in a photomultiplier tube, photomultiplier tube, PMT, PMT. Uh, and actually, you know, that the, the PM tube, PM tube, you know, the consists of, you know, photocathode here and multiple dynodes, multiple dynodes and anode here, anode here. Yeah, actually, you know, that the, uh, in the photocathode of a photomultiplier tube, this light photon, Light photon, you know, generate, you know, these elect photo electrons, photo electrons. Okay. Uh, actually, you know, that the uh, photo due to the photoelectric effect, photoelectric effect, this light photon can generate, you know, these photo electrons. Okay. And uh, the amount of, you know, the these photo electrons uh, multiply. By applying the you know the positive electric field between the these multiple you know diodes multiple diodes okay yeah diodes are a kind of you know electrode electrode and between you know each diode pair you know there is a electric the passive registers like this. Okay, registers here and between this second and third diode, there is also register. And they are you know, connected by these legislative chains. Okay, legislative chains. And we apply some high voltage between you know, this anode and cathode, anode and cathode. And here, uh, uh, there is an you know, electrical ground here. Okay. So, yeah, if we apply this high voltage here, and if you know that there is a you know, legislative chains like that, so you can imagine that electric field will be highest here. But the, the voltage will be dropped by this, you know, registers. I mean that the voltage at the anode is higher than the last diode. Okay, and voltage measured here will be higher than the voltage measured at here. Okay, because of this, you know, electric, you know, registers. Okay. So voltage will be dropped again, dropped, 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 dropped again, and it will be the zero at the ground. Okay. So the voltage is increased. Okay. So as I told you, you know, photo electron was you know generated at this you know photo but the electric Field is zero here, and 
the voltage electric field is higher, the measured this point is higher than the ground. So I mean this is minus and this is plus. So this then this electric field will make you know this photon electron move to the in this direction. Okay. And these electrons will be accelerated because the electric potential at this point is higher than the ground. Yeah, so I mean that the, the speed of you know, the photoelectron at this point will be higher faster than the speed of photoelectron here because it is accelerated. I mean, that it has a higher energy than when it was generated. So when this accelerated in electron intact with you know, this first dyno, it generates you know, some secondary electrons, usually four or five electrons for each of you know, photoelectron because it is you know, accelerated and each energy was amplitude the, you know, the, and higher than each initial the kinetic energy. So five electrons are generated here. And these you know, electrons are also, will also move to the second diode because uh, the electric potential at the second diode is higher than the electric potential than first one. I mean, that this is minus and this is plus. So these electrons will move to this direction and they will be accelerated again because of the, the electric potential difference. So each of you know, the electrons accelerated electrons will generate you know, more number of you know, electrons. For example, you know, there are five electrons per each electron. So yeah, if you know that each of five electrons generate five electrons, the total number of electrons will be 25. Five multiplied by five. So now we have 25 electrons. Although there was only one here, and there was five electrons were generated here, uh, each of the five electrons generated another five. So five by five, we have 25 electrons here. And if it repeated in, at each diode, the number of electrons will be increased by five at each of you know at each diode stage. Okay. I mean that the one electron here, five, twenty-five, and one hundred to twenty-five, and six hundred, you know, twenty-five here. So too many here. Okay. Too many here. Yeah, it is almost you know. 10 to the 6, 1 million electrons at the last stage, 1 million electrons. So this photomultiplier tube multiply the number of electrons by about 1 million at the last stage of this you know, photomultiplier tube. So it is a very, very effective, you know, the Photo sensor, photo sensor that uh, is very sensitive to the in light photon, and it has very high gain of signal amplification. Signal amplification, okay, due to the you know, this you know, the mechanism. So this is very smart you know, device, very very smart device, okay. So. Yeah, photo cathode. Actually, you know that the photo cathode, we need in you know, a photo cathode at the, the entrance of the electric the, you know, light photons here. And 
you know, usually the cesium, antimony, and other bialkali component are used. And the quantum efficiency of this photocathode is very important uh, because you know that the quantum efficiency is the conversion efficiency from the visible light to electron. So we need to generate as many electrons as possible, okay, to get the you know high quality electric signals. So quantum efficiency should be you know high. Uh, but usually this quantum efficiency is, you know, wavelength dependent, wavelength dependent. So for different wavelengths, quantum efficiency are different. For example, this is the, you know, the quantum efficiency, wavelength dependent quantum efficiency of a typical photomultiplier tube. So you can see here the x-axis is wavelength and y-axis is quantum efficiency. And this photomultiplier tube's quantum efficiency is maximum at you know wavelengths of you know 400 nanometer. Okay. Yeah, typically you know that the, the photomultiplier tube has maximum you know, quantum efficiency between 350 to 450. So that is why we prefer some scintillation material. You know that generate that emit you know the visible photons. You know I mean that the usually the blue photons, blue light photons, because blue light has you know this range of you know wavelengths. Okay. Yeah. The yeah actually I already told you the you know other component in the photomultiplier. Tubes. As I told you, photomultiplier tube needs several, many, about 10, you know, diodes. So I think you can remember what the function of diode. Yeah, that was drawn with, you know, purple color here. Okay, we usually we need, you know, 10, 10 to 12 stage of, you know, diode for the signal amplification. Okay, and the multiplication factor is usually you know one million about one million for you know, 10 stage you know the diode and we also we should also have in you know, anode and high voltage supply usually you know that the, uh, we apply about you know 1000 volt you know high voltage 1000 volt in you know, high voltage and it is divided into 50 to 100 volt you know potential difference between the dynode based on the resistive chains between the dynode. Uh, so in this slide, you can see many different type of you know, photocathode. Photo uh, in the gamma camera, you know, in the gamma camera, we use you know, round type while the hexagonal type, you know, photodiodes. For the you know path systems, we can use you know rectangular tie, you know photomultiplier tubes, and sometimes we use you know position sensitive photomultiplier tubes like this. So they are position sensitive you know photomultiplier tube, where the you know anode of photomultiplier tube is you know segmented to discriminate you know position of you know the light photon in the interaction. Okay. Yeah. So as I told you, so I, now you know, I'm now telling you about the you know photosensors because for the semiconductor detectors, you know, photosense is the most important, one of the most important components in addition to the you know simulation crystals. Okay. The, one of the photosensor that I introduced was you know photomultiplier, photomultiplier tube PMT, and another important photosensor for medical purpose is photodiode. Introduced here, but I already told you what is a photodiode. 
So in the previous slide, you know, I told you the basic principle of photodiode is the same as semiconductor, you know, radiation detectors. Yeah, I told you if you know this kind of you know detector is sensitive to the you know gamma ray or X-ray, it is a radiation detector. Yeah, but uh, if this guy is sensitive to the visual light or UV, it can be used as a photodiode. Okay, so they are ba basically the same. Yeah, anyway. The photodiode is a kind of in you know, a diode where the, the p-type and n-type semiconductor are you know combined with each other, and you know reverse bias voltage is applied, and nothing happens if there is no instance photon or something like that, and it you know electric current is induced if it measure if it detect some visible or UV photos. So that is the basic principle of you know, photodiode, okay? Yeah, there are several different types of photodiodes are available. You know, most widely used photodiode for, you know, typical applications. Typical applications is a silicon photodiode that is very compact and high, you know, quantum efficiency, usually quantum efficiency or, you know, now, quantum efficiency was the conversion efficiency, you know, from the visible photon to the, you know, uh, electron, electron. So it should be high, but the, you know, quantum efficiency of a photomultiplier tube is about 30% or something like that. But the silicon photodiode, you know, quantum efficiency range the, you know, 60 to 80%. It is typically you know, higher than in you know, a photomultiplier tube. But the, you know, the typical silicon photodiode doesn't have you know, the internal gain, so signal output is very weak. The Avalanche photodiode is in a diode work in the, the proportional region, proportional region, uh, and the gain of you know, Avalanche photodiode is about 1,000, 1,000. So 1,000 is you know, much lower than 1 million. That is the, you know, the amplification gain of a photomultiplier tube. So relative to the photomultiplier tube, the average photo the noise property of the you know, average photodiodes in the output is quite poor. So we need, you know, very sophisticated, you know, low noise, you know, electronics, electronics. Yeah, but the, you know, most modern, you know, the photodiode, the most advanced photodiode, the silicon photomultiplier, SIPM. SIPM works in the Geiger mode, Geiger mode, and each gain, you know, range 1 million to 10 million. So it is uh, equivalent to the, the gain of you know, for the multiplier too. So that is why I said you know, it is you know, most advanced in photodiode because it has equivalent you know, amplification gain you know, to the for the multiplier too. So we like silicon pin, okay? We like silicon. So let me now move to the, the last topic that I'd like to tell you is the scintillator. Yeah, actually, you know that the you know scintillator is you know the base very basic component of you know scintillation detectors, and many different type of you know inorganic scintillators are used for you know medical radiation detectors. So yeah, the sodium iodide silent dope. The, you know, sodium iodide is mostly used for gamma camera. And for PET systems now, sodium doped, doped you know, LSO crystals are most widely used now. But the BGO was, you know, used before. And still we have interest in the BGO. 
because you know the BGO can be used for pet systems, but uh, it is less expensive than RSO, less expensive than RSO. And BGO the generate you know, the prompt photons rather than the scintillation photon. That is very, very fast. So we can obtain some time of flight information also from the you know, BGO. Okay. Yeah, but the, but the, you know, basically the decay time of BGO is longer than you know, RSO. So that is why we use you know, RSO more frequently than BGO. Okay. Yeah, the, actually we should understand you know, the, the, the properties of you know, each different type of you know, inorganic scintillators for proper use of them for you know, different you know, the radiation measurement systems. Uh, these properties you know, that we should you know, consider, the, including the density of you know, scintillator and effective you know, atomic number. The higher density and effective atomic number are preferred because you know that the, with the higher density and higher effective atomic number, we can start you know the, the larger number of you know radiations. Okay, so it is more efficient. So if you are focused on the density and effective atomic number, the PGO and LSO are you know more effective you know inorganic scintillators you know relative compared to the you know sodium iodide okay yeah but the sodium iodide, the main advantage of sodium iodide is its price the price of sodium iodide is quite you know low because the material cost for sodium iodide is, is low and melting point of these materials is also low so we can more easily, you know, the grow sodium iodide rather than you know visual the SO. Okay. Yeah, but the, the density and effective atomic number of sodium iodide is not sufficiently high for the PET imaging, where we need to measure. You know, 511 kilo electron volt you know, gamma rings, that is too high to be measured by the you know, sodium iodide. So that is why in the pad we use BGO or the LSO crystals. Okay. Yeah, another property that we should you know, pay attention is the decay time. Yeah. We prefer shorter decay time. Yeah, if the you know decay time of scintillation ride is too long, yeah, actually you know that uh, it does not disappear before the next uh, you know event you know happens. So I mean that the before next event happen, I mean that the before next ionizing radiation comes, all of the scintillation light generated in the scintillation crystal should you know disappear. Yeah, but the if the decay time is too long, it still exists. So it will cause it will result in some you know, baseline fluctuation of the you know, radiant uh, output signal of the scintillation detectors. So that is why we prefer the shorter decay time. And if you compare the decay time of BGO and LSO, the LSO has you know, the much shorter you know, decay time. So that is why we, you know, more likely you know, LSO than BGO for PET application, because because in PET, because we do not use a collimator, you know, a lot of you know gamma ray photons are detected. The instance rate of gamma ray photons are much much higher than you know gamma camera. So we need very fast scintillators like you know, LSO or something like that. Okay. The photon yield also important. Yeah, photon yield means you know that the number of photons per the kilo electron volt of instance radiation. So with the same radiation, the amount of energy of radiation, we need to generate more photons, more visual photons. So sodium iodide is a good you know, scintillator in terms of you know, photon yield. Okay.
the index of refraction should be you know same as you know glass or something like that to be matched with you know <clears throat> to avoid you know the total refraction of the light photons at the entrance window or you know photo multiply two that is mostly you know the glass okay it should not be hygroscopic. Yeah, hygroscopic means that hygroscopic materials absorb some, you know, water molecule, water molecule. So if we absorb, you know, too much water molecule, you know, each property will be changed. For example, you know, if sodium, sodium iodide, unfortunately, you know, that the sodium iodide is hygroscopic, you know, the material. I mean, that it absorbs. So water molecule from the air. And if we observe sodium iodide absorb too much water, its property is changed. For example, you know, the color of sodium iodide is changing. I mean that uh, it is in a transparent material, sodium iodide is basically, but uh, its color is changed into yellow. So if the color of the sodium iodide crystal is changing into the you know, yellow, actually it self it absorbs light photon generated by the you know uh, sodium iodide. I mean it, it can be a kind of you know, self-absorber of the light photon. So it is not a good property. So but uh, fortunately BGO and LSO is not you know hygroscopic. Yeah, you should also pay attention, you know, on the peak emission. Yeah, there are, you know, actually, you know, that the light photon, you know, generated from the scintillation crystals doesn't have a unique, you know, wavelength. Wavelength. But the, you know, uh, but the, the peak emission is, you know, depending on the, you know, scintillation crystals and the, as you can see, the peak emission of these three crystals is between you know 400 to you know 500. Okay, 500. But in terms of you know peak emission, I would do you know prefer sodium iodide or LSO rather than the you know BGO, because as I showed before, the photomultiplier too, like the photons with you know wavelengths, you know about 300 you know, nanometer or something like that, uh, 400 nanometer or something like that. I actually, you know, I showed you this curve, okay? This curve. So 480 is here, so it is too high. So 400 would be better, okay? Mm, yeah, another interesting, you know, scintillators for medical purpose is columnar CSI. Yeah, cesium iodide, the, you know, can be grown in this, you know, columnar shape. And this columnar, you know, cesium iodide are uh, mostly used for very, you know, very high special resolution, you know, X-ray detectors, okay? Yeah. So this slide show very typical sodium iodide based, you know, detectors. They consist of you know photomultiplier tube here and sodium iodide you know scintillation crystals. So once you know <clears throat> gamma ray you know come here, so the <clears throat> energy of gamma ray <clears throat> sorry is converted into the you know visible light, and these visible light are you know detected by the photomultiplier tubes, and this light photon is converted into the electrons and number of electrons are multiplied by the multiple dinos in the photo, you know, multiplying tubes, okay? This is a very typical, you know, sodium iodide detector. <clears throat> yeah, so today, you know, that, uh, you know, I introduced to you, you know, three different, you know, radiation detectors. The one of them was gas field detector, and the second one was a semiconductor detector. And last one was the scintillation detector. 
that consist of you know, scintillation crystals and photosensors. Uh, in the last part, you know, that, uh, I told you about uh, two different photosensors, I mean, photomultiplier tube and photodiode. And I explained to you about the major properties of the you know, scintillation crystals. Okay. Uh, so do you have, you know, any, you know, questions? Yeah, please feel free, you know, asking questions if you have anyone. Any questions regarding the, you know, radiation detectors or basic principles or application? Yeah, so yeah, if you don't have you know any question, so may I close this session? Okay. Okay, let me close this session and see you later. Okay, bye bye.